Welcome back to episode 4 of Extreme One Chunk Varlamore Edition. On last episode, we finished the 58 cooking grind for the pita slash pita bread, however you pronounce it. We also rolled our new chunk, which for the most part we consider a death chunk, at least in respect to what's around us, though it's actually not a death to the account chunk. It really is just our first long grind. In this episode, we'll continue our grind through this chunk and maybe one day we'll finish it. Before we jump in, I want to preface something. What you're going to watch is me naturally progressing through the thought process of the grind and, frankly, a lack of mindset that I'd be able to tackle it. I want to keep these videos as progress throughout the entire journey, so that means you're going to have to hear me process through all of these things naturally. If you haven't seen the chunk task yet, this is what it looks like. I will not rehash every item on this list. If you want to see that, we go into pretty good detail in the last episode. It's about the last couple of minutes. It's time marked for you to be able to skip to. And without further ado, let's get back to work. Let's do a mixture of wood cutting and thieving. Level three wood cutting. I missed it, but level four wood cutting. Level five wood cutting. I'd be missing this a lot, but level seven wood cutting. Level two Fletcher. All right, so I'm sure somebody already said this from the last episode, but there is something that I did not realize when we unlocked this chunk. This chunk being the Hunter's Guild. When I unlocked the Hunter's Guild, I got access to these iron knives. These iron knives I can wield immediately and start doing range training. Well, in my last chunk, I unlocked iron bolts. It was a drop from a guard. Those iron bolts required level 26 ranged to well wield them. So I will be hopping to get the two iron knife drop and training ranged until level 26 where I can wield those iron bolts before I do any other content of any other chunk that I've unlocked because it should have been done before I rolled. So this will be priority now until I finish it, then I'll start going on to the other content. All right, so I did a couple world hops. We've got 500 iron knives. That's going to be a good start, I guess. That's 250 world hops, so it took a little while, but we're going to start training. I'm going to train on accurate because I think I want to preserve these as long as possible to make it so I don't have to keep world hopping. I'm going to start training on these buffalo, and honestly, if it goes fast enough, I might just do all the training on the buffalo. I haven't decided. I'll look at the guards and see what their defense is, but I'd like to just preserve ammo, so easier target to hit definitely helps. All right, there's our first ranging attack. I don't know how long these are going to last on the ground, so I'm just going to pick them up. I don't mind getting hit a couple times. It's not a big deal to me. But that is ranging level 2. These are very, very slow kills, guys. Alright, and there's our first kill. I'm going to leave the beef. I don't really care. But I'll take bones and keep uh, doing it for prayer. But it looks like we lost 11 iron knives for that one kill. This is going to take a little bit longer than I thought. I think if once we start going, get maybe to like 5 or 6, we'll start to really see the snowball here. But it's going to be slow going to start, guys. I definitely think so. And there we go. Level 3 ranged. Again, I'm going to pick up every time I get a level or any time I look like I might lose some of these knives. Just, just want to preserve them as much as possible. But about to get this kill number 2. Boom. Level 4 ranged. We're getting there, guys. It's a little bit slow, but we're getting there. Alright, so that was level 4. Kill 3. Ammo update. 460. Level 5 ranged. There we go. Ranged level 6. There we go. Level 7 ranged. It's not that hard. How do I miss every single level? <laughs> level 8 ranged. Look at me, old dogs learn new tricks. Level 9 range. Level 10 range. I think it's because I naturally just don't record. Like, I've been playing RuneScape for a while and I just haven't recorded and created content. But there it is, range 11, I missed it again. Surprise, surprise. Alright, I did it, level 12. I will do an update real quick on knives. 374 knives, we are not even close to halfway. Level 19 will be halfway. We're halfway to halfway, so we're a quarter of the way, and we've already gone through more than a quarter of our arrows. So it looks like, actually almost exactly a quarter of our arrows, so it looks like we will be very close. I uh, might have to go back to get a couple more. Level 13 range. Womp womp. 14 range. 15 range. Update. I'm definitely feeling an increase in XP. Hit rate is hitting faster. I'm also hitting 3, so I'm hitting higher numbers per potential loss of a knife. So, this is going better than I expected. I might actually have enough. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I might actually have enough iron knives here. I'll update you guys uh, at the next milestone. I think I'm going to do half. When I get to half the iron knives, so once we hit 250, 
We'll do an update, see if we're halfway to the XP or not. All right, this should go of no surprise ever again, but uh, there was 16 range. And there's 32 hit points. All right, so we just hit 16 prayer and 37 combat at the same time. And the exact millisecond I stopped that recording, we got 17 range. I think I missed it, but that was 18 range a little bit ago. All right, so I missed it, of course, but we do have an update. Two things. One is level 19 range. That should be halfway uh, because that's 26 minus 7. We should be halfway to the 26 that we need for our iron bolts. And we are above halfway on our knives. So I would expect us to be able to actually complete this without having to world hop and get more knives. So that's good. Level 20 range. Of course I cleared it, but 21 range. Level 22 range. 23 ranged. Only three to go. Not bad. Well, I missed it before I world hopped, but that is 24 range. That's 25 range. And there's 33 hit points. Of course, like nothing else. Uh, range level 26 coming in and I missed it. That means we should be done with our backlogged skill. Really backlog uh, anything uh, backlogged for chunk tasks wise. We will wield these iron bolts and voila. There we go. Iron bolts equipped, so so we should be all set, and we will get back to our current chunk and all of the tasks that we have in it. And there's level 42 thieving. I've decided to start going with the master farmer to get a good seed pile up. Also, it's level 38 as opposed to level 40, so I've as opposed to the guards, so I've got a little bit better fail rate. So I'm gonna continue to do master farmer probably for a while until like maybe 50, and then. Uh, or I guess maybe a little bit less, maybe like 50, 45, 48, something like that. Do a tiny bit of guards and then switch over to the actual thieving content that's in Varlamore at 50 and try that out. I would like, if I can, to just do that all the way to 75 because we're going to need the jewelry, I think, and it might take longer. I expect the XP rates to not be as great, so it might take longer. But I think having that jewelry could be, like, amazing for our, our, our content. So we're going through this <clears throat> food kind of quickly, which I don't think is a problem. We've got a lot of it backed up. I'm fearing that we might actually have to make more, though, eventually, depending on... I mean, we're not even halfway to 50 yet. And I've already gone through, like, three or four inventories. So we'll see how much food we have left uh, when we get closer. But we might end up having to do more sweet corn. But at least we're getting a buttload of seeds. And speaking of seeds, this is our current seed tab. I'll do some organization later, but I'm just kind of dumping at this point. Just so we can get through some of these levels quick. Alright, so there it is. My absolute tiny brain just clicking away, watching a stream, and we died to thieving, of all things. Who knows why? Probably because I'm dumb. I'm going to run back, and I'll update you guys when we get another level, I guess. It's a lonely, dark walk back. Rip hardcore. Bye forever. Time to restart the account, guys. We'll see if we get different chunks or not. See you next week. It just dawned on me. I don't... I don't know if I recorded 43 or 44 leaving, so there's third 43, and maybe 44. Oh, I missed it. We click too fast, that's just the way it is, but 45 thieving. Level 46 thieving. Well, I missed the drop, but on my way back I noticed it. Oh, that is 47 thieving. Have I ever told you guys how much I suck at this game? It happened again. In my defense, this is happening because I'm doing research in the chunk that we're in. I'm not doing leisure content, okay? But, I still suck. We just hit the point where we have 1400 food left in the bank after this inventory. Just to give you guys an idea of kind of what I've got going on. I get myself down to about 5 HP, take a trip back to the bank, fill my full inventory with food, bring it back over here. I'll drop like 5 or 6 in the house next to where I am, and then I'll start pickpocketing because you fill up with seeds too quick. And then slowly as I go, I'll pick up as I need. Uh, the nice thing is when he's stuck in this chunk, or in this little tile, I can stand here. He can't actually walk any more east. So he can't walk to here, for example. He'll never step on this tile. That means if I stand here, he's forced to only walk between these two. And what some people know or don't know is that if you're pickpocketing somebody, you can like 
trap him, right? So he's trapped in this one tile. He can't move, so I can always just click in one location. But after five minutes, he'll despawn. So what I've been doing is when the five-minute timer is close to going up, I'll move, he comes out, I'll start pickpocketing from here, and then eventually he'll move back in, and then I'll go in as well. And then every once in a while when this rat comes in here and just takes up the tile, I'll just smack him and kill him. So I'll passively get like, I guess, 400 attack XP or something like that. Oh, I should have just gotten this in the same clip, but that's uh, 48 thieving was last run. I'm sure I'm, I'm confirmation biased here, but it does feel like when I'm progressing through these levels that it's actually getting worse and worse. My first couple inventories, I was getting the last row in my inventory full of seeds, and now I can barely make it to the third row. It's just interesting how RNG works out, I guess. I guess I got extremely lucky before, and it's just kind of leveling. But here's another inventory. I've also decided that I'm actually just going to... I've also decided that I'm just going to do this until 50. I don't think going to the guards for coins is actually a good idea. I think I'm going to get so many coins from going from 50 to 75 through valuable goods and or just pickpocketing wealthy citizens as is. That I don't think it makes any sense. So I might as well just take the extra. It's probably like two or three thousand less XP per hour to be here. I might as well just take that, but also get seeds on my way. That way I at least have seeds for when we unlock the next chunk. Dang it, guys. Gosh dang it. Oh man. I'm just so AFK and passively editing videos and doing other things. I'm just like mindlessly clicking while I'm thinking of other things and Yeah. While I'm Google searching and reading and wiki it's just Listen, we knew it we weren't going to have very long, okay? It's just the way it is. Marking down another death. Was that four now? I got 49 thieving a while ago, I think. Listen, I failed at a lot of other ones, but I got the most important one. Also, it lined up perfectly with an inventory full of food. That's 50 thieving. We are going to run over, switch our location, and start thieving wealthy citizens to start trying to get some keys lined up. I think... It's actually the most efficient just to get one key and go to the house and do it for a little while until we get our level high enough because from what I gather, when you use a key and you pickpocket at the house, you have a 0% fail regardless of the level. It makes the most sense just to use them, the keys right away, bank that guaranteed XP, that way I can... When I come back to pickpocket wealthy citizens, I'll have gained the most amount of XP of, of not failing. The other bonus here that we have is every 90 seconds, like right now actually, this is perfect timing. Every 90 seconds, a child will interact with a wealthy citizen and allow me to gain passive XP. One click, this goes for 20 seconds, I can just let it go completely, I don't have to touch it. And it 0% fail rate, so that was 9 in a row of not having to touch it. So then in 90 seconds, there'll be another one. Oh, and look at that. There's a first house key. That's perfect timing. So I think this is what I'll do. I'll, I might I might go to like 10. I don't know. They're one in 17. It probably shouldn't take that long. I think maybe we'll do 10 keys. And then once we get 10 keys, we'll go and just do a bunch of house robberies. And then we'll come back and we'll just do rinse and repeat. That way we can switch up the content a little bit. But this is where we'll live now. Uh, pretty much until level 75. Uh, thieving, I think. I don't think we'll ever change. Alright, so I know how I said I thought it was every minute and a half. It's not. It just ticked again. I want to say that was like 30 seconds later or something. But regardless, uh, here we go. Passively getting it again. This is this is actually going to be amazing for our grind. Yeah, this is, this is way better than going down and getting seeds. I'm very excited. I missed 51, I just realized. Uh, we're doing some house robberies to give it a go. I'll update you guys after I like kind of learn the ins and outs. But uh, that was 52 thieving, but this is 51 and 52. I just finished posting episode 2, but this is the first couple pieces of jewelry we got. So we got a sapphire amulet and a gold ring. Those will come in handy later down the road. Gold ring for some uh, clue steps, I believe, and maybe some other things. But sapphire, obviously, for... Um, amulets so we can enchant it that'd be good uh xp and all right i'm a couple keys deep in here at this point of four keys i've used so i'll give you guys the synopsis of kind of what's going on from what i understand it's a random house for me it's well, for anyone really it's one of these three houses you go there use a key uh assuming the person that owns this house is not here if they're here the door will be open so then you just can't go in 
Then you just start picking, just choose any chest or wardrobe and you'll start searching. Every once in a while you'll get a random arrow, just like I had on this one. It'll be a 630 XP drop, which is very good for my, my chunk. Oh, there's an emerald ring that'll help us. That gets me into the next point. You can find jewelry in anything, which is very good for me because now I, I thought I had to wait and just kind of sit on this the jewelry cases. That's not the case. I can just slowly go through any of these. However, there's the XP drops. That'll be 630. So that helps us a lot in these low levels. Definitely going to help this progression. Uh, we're going to get to 75 pretty quick. The other tasks are certainly going to be more uh, mind-numbing and take a lot longer than this thieving grind, I think. And I thought it was going to be the other way around. But regardless, the bones, I don't know what it actually is because I haven't gotten it yet. But apparently you chisel it and it gives you 150, 125 bone shards and 5 crafting XP. I don't see that anywhere. I've done 4 houses now. My thought process... Oh, I'm going to get caught here maybe. Ah! Ooh, that was close. Um, so yeah, after, after a while, they come in the house, and if you get caught, then they take 90% uh, of whatever you got of your valuables that you got from there. Anyways, so we'll go into this house now, just because it's new. All right, now we're here. It's a little bit easier to talk and explain things again. Yeah, so the bones things don't seem to be dropping very well, uh, like very often at least. I have that rule of 1 in 50. If I can't get something at 1 in 50, then it's not considered a primary training method. So, with that in mind, unless I start getting, like, a ton of those bone things, I need 10,000, I think, or 12,000, I think was my calculation, to get to 43 crafting for the bolt, t or the tips, I think it was, for diamond bolt tips. No, that was for a cut diamond, sorry, cutting a diamond, 43 crafting. I think I need 12,000 of those bone things. I'm not getting any. I haven't gotten a single one in five. So that leads me to believe it's more rare than 1 in 30, or sorry, 1 in 50, like my rule set. Since that's the case, I mean, I've searched way more than 50 of these. I'm going to backlog that task until obviously we have another training method for crafting. Then we'll immediately have to do that one. All right, speaking of those bone things, I just ended the, the last clip, but this is the blessed bone statue that we're talking about. You take a chisel to this, you get 5 crafting XP and 125 bone shards. I'm going to collect them because it helps us in long term, but and, and maybe I can get enough of them to get to another method of crafting, but for right now, it's just not feasible, just given how rare they drop. And with that, should be 53 thieving. All right, so I've quickly realized you need quite a bit of run energy to run between uh, each of these three houses because it's a random house each time. If it wasn't a random one and I could bounce between multiple, like these two, that'd be nice. Aside from world hopping potentially, which I don't see very being very efficient because you could world hop into a house that only has like 10 seconds left and then you waste a key. So aside from that, I think this is going to be my permanent method. What I'm going to do is sit here in AFK for a minute and a half while I can do other things while AFK, like... Um, whether I'm editing or creating, you know, graphics or whatever, or uh, looking up different things to do in the trunk, those types of things. Anytime I'm able to do that, I'll AFK here, wait for this situation. Once one of the wealthy citizens gets distracted, we'll pickpocket it. Then we'll wait a minute and a half and do it again. And then once my run energy gets full, then we'll go back to doing houses. Otherwise, I'll be walking slowly to houses and wasting just too much time in between. Also, while we've been doing this, we've been getting easy clue scrolls. I mean, I don't think there's any that, that I can do, but in the off chance that there's one in this chunk, I've, I've just been piling them up. I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to keep piling them over in the corner. I don't need to see them. They've got an hour and a half cooldown or whatever they are, two hours. So I'm just going to let it go. Also, side note, this is decent money. I'm not going to lie. 21k just from the actual wealthy citizen, which I've pickpocketed 263 of. And then also, I, I use six keys and we've got 459 valuables so this is pretty good i feel like i think we're gonna get to the point though where we're, we're gonna have an excess of keys because we can't get rid of them fast enough because of our run energy so i'm not sure what we'll do when we get a stockpile of a couple hundred or something i'm assuming we'll eventually get that high but yeah we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there i think i got a little sidetracked but that's 54 thieving and that's 55 thieving that's 56 th 57 thieving just as a heads up, I'm going to miss every level here just because the keys are in a limited amount of time. So I'm just going to automatically keep clicking 
and then I'm just going to miss it, but I'll record it afterwards. So you're going to miss every dialogue probably for like majority of these thieving levels, except for if we're doing the uh, person outside, I guess. All right. So that's probably the first real air quote bank that we'll do. Uh, I'm going to start a new tab for any of these statues we get. We'll see how far we get. I mean, if we get really close, I guess I'll uh, do it. I don't know. I feel like we're not going to get very close, so I feel like it's not worth talking about, but we'll see what happens. And then I'm also going to start one with jewelry. We'll see how far that goes. I'm going to keep the valuables on me and the house keys on me. Uh, everything else I'll bank, though. Back to it. Get more keys. Ran out of, uh, I ran out of energy. We're going to do this one in real time. I'm going to get it right here. Boom, there it is, 59 thieving. Just as a overall progress update, uh, 59 is a, a, just a little over a quarter of the way to 75. So we're about 25% done with this grind. Also, I'm going to keep all the valuables uh, until we're done with this grind, and then we'll hand them on at once and see what the big chunk of ch uh, change we get from them. I waited just for you guys, 60 thieving. Holy crap. I was just sitting here AFK. Look what I got, guys. Look at this. Holy crap, that was early, right? That's, I mean, 300, 289, I'll take it, right? I'll take it, just kidding, it's theirs. Gotcha. And there's 61 thieving. So just to finish the run with some of the keys I had, I'm running out of front energy, so I'm going to stop and go back and get more keys. But just a quick update. So based on what rune light's showing, I've gotten 37 keys total. I currently have two in my inventory, so that's 35 that I've used. I've only gotten seven statues. So I thought it was 30%. Seven divided by 35 is actually 20%. So we're slowly declining in our expectations. So I'm starting to think that my estimates are actually overestimates that I got lucky in the beginning. But like I said before, we'll continue to update this as we get going. We're at 61 leaving. We will update again probably around 65 and see where we're at. And I missed it again, 62 thieving. It seems like we're getting somewhere between 30 and 40k XP per hour. I don't know why the XP rates aren't lining up with what the wiki says. It's probably just, I don't know, not calculating correct or I don't know. But I'm doing this basically full effort, not missing a dang thing. Um, yeah, and it's saying I'm about 34, 35 um, k XP per hour. I might have to reset it. Maybe it's not counting. So maybe it's counting the wealthy citizens in with that. I don't know. But regardless, these levels are starting to get longer and longer. You know, soon be taking about an hour per level, and then of course it'll expand uh, more after that. But that's where we are. And that's 63 thieving. Just want to say I appreciate these two boys, Black and iPhone. I am. I appreciate you both. Love you both. GG. I missed it, but 64th even. Just a quick shout out to Barley Water. I really appreciate the feedback on all the videos. Thanks for uh, tuning in and giving me the uh, subscription. I really appreciate it. Best of luck out there. I've decided to start fletching in between waiting for this distraction cooldown. Just pickpocketing the wealthy citizens is just not fast enough. It's not worth it. Um, so I just decided I'm, I just go over here, cut these two trees, come over and, and start fletching. That way we can at least get some fletching at the same time because we're going to need it anyways. So even if I could wipe off 10 levels, it saves me a bit. I'll end up needing about 18,000 uh, oak logs to be able to do all of the levels that I need for fletching. That'll get me to, I think, 69 woodcutting is probably what I'll end up. That's my guess. The only real problem I've noticed with this method is it actually lowers my run. Uh, and the reason I'm getting more keys usually is because I run out of run. Um, however, I did a long stretch with keys and I think I was getting more efficient at it so maybe I don't need to wait for run energy as much as I think so hopefully this will be fine if not I might try to go back and forth and do this without any run just just walk because it looks like I do have some time afterwards anyways we'll try that next and that's level three fletching and there's level nine wood cutting all right there we go there's our first white cash stack let's go means nothing for the account we're gonna have way more than that when we finish but that's a cool little milestone. All right, there's level 10 woodcutting, and there's level 11 woodcutting, and there's level four fletching, and there's level 12 woodcutting. So now that I'm kind of just going back and forth and getting logs so that I could do at least a little bit of passive 
fletching. I've started just dropping my easy clue scrolls. I also looked into easy clue scrolls. There's two steps that are in our chunks in general. Uh, one of which I think is in the museum, which I don't know where the museum is. I'm assuming it's up here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So that's the museum. So it's a chunk away. However, it needs robe items from the gnome tree. So that's way off limits. The other one is just to search a location in the Hunter's Guild, which we already have unlocked. It's not been confirmed or not whether you need the 46 Hunter to, to do it, but I think because you can get into the guild without 46 Hunter, you just can't interact with anyone that's there. I think you could get it without any issues, uh, but I won't know until I get that step. What I'll end up doing if I do get that step is I will start juggling uh, in hopes to just get multiple of the same step. That's the only thing I can try to do. Otherwise, I'm kind of screwed. I'll never get an easy done. Just quickly looking through some of the rewards that we could get from that easy clue scroll. The biggest one that I'm thinking, I guess there's a couple. One, Staff of the Bob Bob the Cat. I, I think that counts as a staff, so we'd be able to uh, cast spells without having a staff, which would be fantastic. Although we obviously don't have the runes, but that would just be something to look forward to. Amulet of Magic doesn't really help us. I mean, it would help us immediately, but eventually when we get the magic level, we can just make our own because we have... Uh, the amulet in the bank already. But the other two that are really, really good. Once the amulet of power, I've been doing this for a while. I haven't gotten a single diamond amulet. So I don't think it exists from the house robbery specifically. With that said, if we can get it through an easy clue, clue step, that'd be super, super nice eventually. The other one is a black pickaxe. I don't know where I could even get another pickaxe in general. And we're not terribly far away from some iron down here and iron, silver, coal, gold, mithril. That'd be freaking sweet to be able to get into all that. So a black pickaxe would really, really be the one that I'd want from an easy clue if we can ever get one done. I think my current plan is going to be getting to level 5 fletching. That'll get us to short bows. And then I will probably go and start using some of these house keys. I've queued up 26 of them. That'll at least give me a little bit. We're only a couple more runs, I think like three more runs back and forth to be able to finish the arrow shafts, then we can start making short bows. That should increase our fletching grind uh, significantly. And then eventually we'll be able to move into oak trees. The bad thing about the oak trees, they're way down here. I think there's one over here and one way over here, something like that. That does not help us for doing this we're not gonna be able to really do this however i still need to do 15 fire making as well so i might as well just do that all on trees uh, so i will be able to at least do a back and forth a bit i'll just be fire making and there was level 13 wood cutting all right and there it is level 5 fletching we no longer need to do any more arrow shafts we can now switch over to short bows oh yeah i forgot early fletching absolutely stinks that short bows are actually the same there's still 5 xp each log so I've got to keep going on that until I hit, I think it's 10. I think 10 is when it starts to get better. All right, real quick. Absolute massive shout out, Electro GIM. So one thing you'll learn about me is I don't have a main. I don't, I don't have a main in this game. I've done a bunch of different Snowflakes accounts, but I've never really stuck to one of them except this one. He, this guy did me an absolute solid. There is a crafting shop east of here. I'm trying to decide the crafting grind. This crafting shop is not listed on the wiki yet. I asked him if he'd go over there and take a look. He did, and he's starting to riddle off everything that that, that we could purchase. So great appreciation to Electro Group Ironman. I love you so much. You're a great human being. You are amazing. All right. Sadly, it's time to end the episode. Thank you so much to those that helped me out in game and search for different things that are in our surrounding chunks so that we're ready for the future and we don't make any other mistakes. I appreciate all the overwhelming support from this series, especially considering I just started this journey and we hit a couple road bumps early on. I intend on taking perhaps a slightly different approach than some other content creators when it comes to chunk locked accounts. I intend to upload regularly or semi-regularly, regardless of major progress. What made me want to start this really was to document my journey, so in many years I can rewatch what I've done and remember all that it took to get there. That means uploading even if we have minimal numbers go up. As an update to the account specifically, we haven't finished a single chunk task yet, but we're certainly making progress. In the next episode, <laughs> surprise, we'll continue our grind and maybe, just maybe, check off some of this list. Until next time, see ya.